All right. Everybody, my name is Barton George. I'm here from Dell Technologies, and I'm here to talk to you about driving innovation at a large company uh, and the five lessons we learned, some of the hard way. Um, let us get going. So here's the same thing, just with uh, our template. So how did it all begin? So about eight years ago, we were looking at ways that Dell could raise its profiles with developers. Developers don't think of Dell as the as the first company that, that would come to mind. Um, so what we started to do is try to brainstorm ways that we could we could up that image. And so we brought in Stephen O'Grady from Red Monk um, and we were tossing around some ideas and he said, you know what would be great is if you guys took one of your laptops, put Ubuntu on it, wrote the drivers, and that would be a unique offering because nobody else is is doing that. And we thought that's an awesome idea, but it'll never happen at Dell. Um, and the reason is, is because the group that makes our clients or the laptops, the volumes that they deal in are just humongous. And to them, this would be a rounding error. In fact, someone told me, one of the VPs told me, yeah, that's what we sell in Belgium on Tuesday between three and four in the afternoon. So this was not something that they were willing to take on. Uh, so we didn't even ask, but, Serendipity struck, and there was an innovation fund that was announced. So the, also during that time, you can tell the, the laptop got a lot of bet, better looking with the XPS 13. So I thought, great, this is a way that I can go, and if I can get the innovation fund, it will give me that uh, sort of protection to go and work with the client group to get this launched. But I started thinking, and I thought, man, I don't know anything about how laptops are made. And I don't know how to build a relevant business case to something like this. And I'm not even a developer. In fact, I failed at Fortran uh, in high school. Um, I did do all my business school essays in, in uh, using the VI editor, but that's, that's sort of where it begins and ends. So finally, somebody convinced me to, to go for it, and I decided I would. And this is what I presented to them. I said, okay, want to do a high-end developer offering the idea is that we're going to do this by uh, out in the open and involving the community. And the main reason we're doing this is to change perceptions. So while we don't want to lose money, it, the, it's more of a strategic play, as I said in the beginning, to get people to think of Dell more in the, in the way of uh, uh, supplying to developers. The, these first two, these what and the how, were pretty unusual for Dell. The high-end developer offering struck people as odd because even though we had been offering, I think we had over 100 uh, uh, offerings where with Ubuntu on our systems, those were on the low-end systems. And so people thought that made sense because you take a free OS, you put it on a low-end system, you get a low-end price point, uh, and it's a perfect match. And yeah, that did work, and we did sell a lot that way. But they didn't think that it would ever work on a high-end uh, system. Why would somebody want to buy a, uh, a, a high-end system with a free OS. And then the other idea too of this openly involving the community, that's just a different way. We always talk to customers, but that's usually you bring them in on NDA, uh, you go out and visit them and you learn that way. But luckily they deliberated after a month, they came back and said, okay, you get a little pot of money, uh, $100,000 and they only end up giving me 40 and you got six months to see if this works, so go. Uh, then the first thing I did, getting back to that whole thing about I don't know anything about um, building workstations or, or coding or building business cases around something as nebulous as this, is I went and I, I formed a team. And so these folks were all people in the client group. Actually, the guy holding the beer at the bottom wasn't even in the client group. He was on the server group, group but he wanted to, to get involved. So all of these people did this in a, in their spare time. I still had to go and get permission from their bosses to let them do this, um, but it was it was more of a, a passion project for, for the team. So as I said, we did this all out in the open, but with the exception of the initial phase, which is the don't embarrass ourselves or, or don't look stupid. Uh, and the idea here is didn't want to come out, announce something that would end up harming us more than it would do good. Um, 
where people would end up saying, you know what, Dell totally doesn't get it. This kind of a thing makes no sense. They never can do it. Boy, they, they don't even know what we're thinking. Uh, so to do that, first talk to a group of what we call our alpha cosmonauts, four developers here in Austin, uh, one actually who used to work for Canonical, um, and they thought it was a decent idea. And then we went out to the West Coast, talked to a big search engine company, and then this company that used to be a bookseller, and presented the idea to them. And while they didn't say, yes, we'll take 50,000 of them, they said, ah, that sounds like a, a decent idea. Why don't you come back to us when you have a little bit more, uh, when you're a little further along? So that was all we needed to start working on the, the system itself. And so the main thing is that we work with Canonical and the device driver manufacturer to get the device driver written. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why Sputnik, this is Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of Canonical and Ubuntu. And after he sold his company during the dot-com boom, he paid $25 million to go up in space as a second space tourist. Now, of course, uh, humans don't go up in Sputnik. They did have a dog, uh, but someone like Mark wouldn't fit. And he went up in Soyuz, but that's not a cool name. So that's why the name Sputnik. All right. So we worked on the uh, the drivers. We got a lot of them done. We still had some key ones not done. Uh, uh, for example, the touchpad driver. Uh, we were working with Cypress, but when we went out with the announcement, it, it wasn't available. Um, and so I, that's why I talk about number two being a, a rough ISO that we that we offered. But we were very uh, open and honest about this is where it's at, and then we're working on it. Uh, and told them too that you know this is something. This is a project. If we get enough um, interest, maybe we'll turn this into a into a real product. But we can't make any requests. But what we'd like to know from you is what would you like to see in your perfect developer laptop? Please go over to this um, this other platform and if you could just put what you want and then you can vote them up or down and we'll see what most people want. So we decided to launch this on my blog because there was a certain amount of distance that gave from Dell, although the whole thing, I wasn't hiding the fact that this was from Dell and I worked with Dell's PR team, et cetera. You can see by the number of daily views that I had, and this is pretty typical in general, leading up to the launch, it, we didn't go with my, my blog because it had a huge number of uh, followers. So average of 59. When we went live with it, first day was 6,000, second day was 9,000, uh, third day was 15,000. Uh, and we thought there'd be interest, but had no idea what it would be like this. There's an order of magnitude larger. Um, so with that, we went forward. And here was what, if how it netted out as far as what people were, were wanting in the way of a developer laptop. And this kind of shows where the, the, I think the number of views showed how much pent up demand there was for something like this. This shows how low the bar really was. So first thing, don't make it more expensive than Windows which would seem obvious because it's a free OS. But that being said, in the past, we had offered this. And because of discounting, et cetera, things got a little wonky. And it, it did, at points, that it did look like it was more expensive in Windows when we offered it on the lower system. So that's something we need to address. Wanted to work with it, uh, just the vanilla image, nothing fancy. Um, you'll see we, we kind of ignored that. Um, and nobody cared, but we'll get we'll get back to that. Eight gigs of RAM, which at that time was was decent. Um, no Windows pre-installed. Once again, something you would expect on a Linux laptop. No CD or DVD. And then they did want support in the uh, in hardware support that it would come with. That's our pro support. So then we were working on the uh, the drivers. We got the touchpad driver working, and so we said, okay, let's do a beta program. We put out a note going all around the world saying, we'd love for you to let us know if you want to be part of our, our beta program. So they filled out this whole long list. Once again, we thought we would get maybe uh, 300 people. We ended up getting 6,000. And so that's where senior management said, OK, this makes sense. Let's, let's move forward and make this a real product. But when we went to actually execute on the beta program, even though we had talked to operations beforehand and they said, yeah, we can send this out around the world. When we came back to them and said, okay, we're ready to go. They said, yeah, we, we can't do that. So what we had to do is we had to admit that 
unfortunately, we couldn't offer this worldwide and had to do this in the US. So not a message we wanted to, to deliver, but had to, had to come clean with that. And then launch time. This is eight months after I got the green light, um, which is pretty fast at Dell. And I would say at most uh, manufacturers that you go from okay to, uh, to launch itself. You know, we did use the same hardware, but getting the drivers written um, was no mean feat. And I, and I should also add, uh, add that when we work to have the device drivers written, a very important part of this is that we take these drivers and have the, the, the device manufacturers push these up to the mainline kernel so that other people can use them, uh, which also adds them, uh, enables people to run different distros other than Ubuntu on our systems. Okay, so how was it received? We got a, a lot of great press. I think one of my favorites was uh, this from Ars Technica about how our substantial investment paid off. Uh, and as you saw, we we're a very small team. We were part time. There was no substantial investment, but it, it, it was really good to, to see that we cast a, a, a big shadow. So then helping to, to make this succeed was the ability to stay process light in certain places. So I would meet with my executive sponsor every two weeks and I would put together an MVP, a minimum viable presentation. So whereas more traditional products or projects, you would have to spend a week putting together PowerPoint, putting together spreadsheets, numbers, et cetera. He really liked the fact that a half hour before we would meet, I would go and I would write out some of the key areas I wanted to talk about, some of the areas that I needed his help with. And this was just a great way for us to sit together and, um, and discuss this and for me to get his help. And as I said, this really helped advance the project because I was able to work on this, uh, spend the time that I would have spent on the presentation working on the, the project. So that being said, on the flip side, because you work at a large company, you don't want to ignore it. And so things like, for example, the website, we weren't going to go and create our own website to sell these systems. It makes sense to sell it on the Dell website where you get millions of, of eyeballs. And then we had this grand vision, which I alluded to before about how people wanted the vanilla image. We thought that, well, that may be what they want, but they really want something more. And we're going to build this cool profile tool to bring down language stacks. So we're going to build this cloud launcher and it's going to be able to, to take applications, send them to the, to the cloud. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and then we found out that this kind of stuff is really hard to do. Um, we never did go with, do anything with the profile tool. And there was a company named Docker that came along and, and did this piece and solved it for us. So that was, uh, that worked out. I think the other thing too, is we came out with a curated list of tools and utilities um, preloaded. And when we found that when we removed those along with when we ended this, nobody really cared. They really did want just the vanilla image. Um, and so here we were thinking we were adding extra value and, and people were fine without it. So one thing they did really want, though, was a powerful counterpart to the system that we launched with. So we launched with the XPS 13. They also wanted a beefy system. And this is a workstation class precision. Uh, and we kept hearing it until one day Jared said, OK, I'm going to go and I'll, I'll get it running. Uh, I'll get Ubuntu running on precision. So he did that in his own time posted a blog and we thought, okay, then people know how to do this and that'll be, they'll be, they'll be happy. Uh, but that only uh, sort of made them hungrier for a real system. So about a year later, it became a real system. We worked to, to produce it. And today, this is what the lineup looks like. We have the XPS 13, which we launched with, and it's now eight years later on its 10th generation. And the precision a mobile workstation developer line is now on its fifth generation, and there's six different models. So I only show two here, but there's there's six different versions. So we went from one system and one config to, to multiple lines and multiple configs. 
And here's just some of the, the feedback we've gotten recently. I love this one from Linus Torvald saying, hey, I don't usually name names, but he liked it so much that he ended up buying one for his daughter when she went off to college. Um, another one here is the upper right-hand corner where someone said on Hacker News, okay, I didn't see that coming. Dell building a better MacBook Pro than Apple uh, as regards to the precision. Uh, and then this under the red is probably my favorite, and it's it, because it shows what we were trying to do, this idea of changing perceptions. Well, I did something I never thought I would. I bought a brand new high-end Dell laptop for full price. Me, hell will be freezing over soon. And then not just publications and blogs, but you get people of the community who will pick it up and they will uh, they'll run with it. So here is a review done on Tech Pills, and he now has over uh, 300,000 views. So this wasn't anything we orchestrated, but it was something that he came across and, and decided that he would do a, do a walkthrough of it. So you get the community love. On the flip side, you also will get some angry people some, sometimes. Uh, and this is where community management comes in. So this gentleman here is based in Denmark. We announced that the precision system was available around the world. He couldn't find it on the, the web page. Uh, you know, that's Denmark. Ooh, I guess you don't ship these models to Denmark. Bad word. Not the first time it happens. This is why I never buy Dell products, never ship the products and see a bigger profit. So obviously he was very frustrated. He heard it was supposed to be there and it wasn't. So what I did after walking around the block and cooling down, uh, I wrote him back and said, hey, it, it should definitely be in Denmark. Uh, I sent an email to our team to find out what's going on. Thanks for flagging this. Stay tuned. And then he just said, that sounds really nice. Thanks for a quick answer. Uh, and I think that's one thing you find often in the community is if you listen to people uh, and you speak with empathy, then they then they feel much better and they they become uh, oftentimes they go from ranters to ravers. So that was a, a positive uh, outcome. And also it helped us because we didn't know that it wasn't available in Denmark. That was some glitch on the on our side. So we were able to fix that. Uh, and then remember, I said it wasn't about making money. Well, that is true. but. It's always good to make some money, particularly that way you can keep the project going. So the original $40,000 uh, has now made over, uh, well, tens of millions of dollars. So that really, that's really a positive thing, like I said, because it ensures that the program goes on. Um, so with that, here's the five lessons that we learned, which I talked about in the beginning or I alluded to. So let's start with number one. And the first one, you're good enough. Um, no one knows it all, build a great team and, and take the leap. And so this is what I said early on, but I, I think this is probably true for a lot of us. You hear about something and you think, well, I don't know about X, I don't know about Y, I don't know about Z, and all those are needed to do something like this, so I'm just not going to do it. Um, and you find out that if you get other people that you can work with who do know this and uh, you, can, you can be the, the person behind it helping to push it, it, it actually can work out. Number two, get a champion, be a champion. So as I said, uh, it was actually, it was Michael Dell's EA who was my executive sponsor. And so that carries weight around the company. But at the same time, there's always people who say, I don't care um, if Michael's behind this or not. Uh, they're, they're never going to find me. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to work with this. I don't have to be part of this because uh, you have to work throughout the system. It's not just the team that I'm working with. As I said, you got to plug into the machine. And what would happen is every so often some new department would learn about it and say, why the heck are we supporting this? Uh, and then you'd have to uh, deal with that. And so for the first two or three years, I had to sleep with one eye open just to make sure that when somebody did um, find out about this and get uh, try and kill it, that, that you were able to bring the, the right resources or, or reach out to them uh, and, and get them uh, to feel a bit better about it. Number three, leverage execute. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this wasn't my idea. This was Stephen O'Grady's idea from Red Monk. And that really doesn't matter in that if you can leverage it and if you can execute it, then you can have a, a winning product or a project or idea because just an idea by itself really doesn't do much. You have to take that, doesn't matter if it's not yours, but you have to take that and then make that happen. 
start small. Um, and this was something that I'm glad people convinced me of because when we originally were going to launch this, I wanted to have both the, as I said, the XPS 13 plus the workstations and multiple configs and et cetera, et cetera. And that's where we got to. But one of the main reasons is because we started small and we went, um, we went incrementally. Also, not to, not to overpromise. And I think that's one thing we were careful about from the beginning that when we announced it, we said, hey, this is a, a project. We don't know if it's become a real uh, product or not. But you know, hey, maybe it will if you if you can give us some some great input. Uh, and then, last but not least, communicate, communicate, communicate. So constant contact with the community. Uh, the probably the the most uh, the most ways that I that I communicate is via Twitter. Although they'll post on my blog uh, as well as forums. When you do communicate, as as I said with the gentleman in uh, Denmark, you want to speak directly and you want to speak with empathy. Uh, particularly, that may not be your first thought, but if you cool down and you do that, uh, it's, it ends up being a win-win. And then when you don't deliver um, or you screw up, you need to be able to come out and, and admit that right from the, the beginning. And that will, that will uh, give you more um, uh, credibility in the, in the community. So that's the Sabatnik story, the five lessons. Um, this is the place that you can reach me as well as where we have our Linux systems. And for my next trick, I'm now in the corporate strategy group and we're looking at how do we put a larger developer strategy all across Dell Technologies. So with that, I think I've got four minutes. Um, I think there might be, uh, okay. Um, we've got some questions in here and I think the, the question is about why, if you get a, uh, if you buy a, a XPS 13 with Windows and then you add uh, Ubuntu on it, um, it, they won't be, uh, oh wait, sorry, that the images aren't available if you wanted to get that. And that just unfortunately happens to be the way that the contract is written between ourselves and Canonical. Um, so it would be great if, if folks could get that image, but it, as I said, that's just the way that it, that it was structured. Um, the other question, um, so this is, a, this is about the idea of backporting. In other words, if you have an older system, would you then think about taking, so what are we, 2004 right now, taking that to one, say, three generations ago? And I think the answer there is because our team is so, um, what shall I say, um, uh, spunk, um, scrappy. In other words, we've got a great team. We just don't, but we don't. We're not big, and so we don't want to overload uh, ourselves with with something that will um, deliver a subpar experience to our customers. And so we'd rather focus on keeping the systems going that that um, that we have. And it, I, we don't usually do this, but the last couple of times we have upgraded a current system with a a newer version. So the XPS 13, the most recent one came out with 1804 uh, and we only do the LTSs and we were able then to recertify for 2004. Um, and that just came out a couple of weeks ago. And we, and we did that once one time before. It just depends on when the systems come out and, and when the, the versions come out as well. So I think that's, let me just scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, oh gosh, there are more. Um, like about a, 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 a uh, Chrome-based product, Acer is the only choice. I've been using it for some time, and no, okay, and no longer own a PC. Um, there are always things that we are we are looking for, and we do have Chrome-based offerings, but not not Linux-based at at this point. We do have um, Chromebooks as well as an enterprise-type Chromebook that that we uh, created. Um, okay. All right. Oh, shoot. They're going too quickly here. I saw the one from someone in South Africa. Um, that's great. I think you buy it through resellers down there um, would be the way to, to do that as opposed to directly from Dell. But with Mark Shuttleworth being from South Africa, you really need to have them there. Um, let's see. And I'm almost out of time. I got one minute. Quick, quick. Um, 
Oh, the lack of the fingerprint uh, sensor support in Dell XPS. It is. We've been working on that, and the it it's just not supported at a at a place yet where we wanted to. We feel comfortable offering it, and it should be out soon. That we'll be um, offering it as an OTA for folks to to um, up, upgrade the systems to that. So let's see. I may be out of time. Um, how do I motivate the, myself and the team? That's a tough one. I think sometimes you get really beaten down, but the good thing is that the folks on the team were motivated to begin with. Uh, there, it was self-selecting. Like I said, the gentleman who was in our enterprise server team, even though he didn't work for the team, he went and he he worked on the laptops. But it's it's being it's being a champion. It's bringing. Uh, when you do hear good things that are written about the system, you bring it to the team and say, look at this, look at what your work has done. Um, and then I know in the beginning, I didn't do as good a job of that, sending it over to our engineers and saying, check this out. Look at what your work is, is being, it's being valued. Um, and then with, with regards to my, myself, it's just sometimes you feel like you're going to give it up, but you, you, for one reason or another, you, you, you keep going. Um, as my manager said in my review one time, it's like pushing a car made of mud up a hill. You really have to sort of stick to it. Um, but there was a lot of great feedback, and I really enjoy interacting with the community. I don't get to do it as much anymore. But that's the the one to one contact with customers is something that I personally um, really enjoy. Let's see, is there anything? ARM based PCs. Uh, we're always considering everything. Uh, let's see. Anything else as I scroll, I scroll. I might have gotten them all. And I'm assuming we're now moving over to the Slack channel, but I need to make sure that I can get that set up on my end. Um, or do we have folks on the uh, the production side, do we have time to keep going on this one? I will assume until I stop getting questions that we can. Okay, we need to move Slack. Okay, so I'm going to go and try and get that set up. So bear with me, and I hopefully will be over there in just a little bit if you're still interested in, in talking more. Thank you.